Ah yes, Windows updates, everybody's favorite thing, right? Obviously not, but sometimes they do actually add some really cool features into Windows, and every six months or so, you probably know that there's a major Windows 10 update. So these are gonna be features that have either been in preview versions of Windows or Microsoft has been talking about. So we might be able to expect to see these in the next major version of Windows or maybe even a future one, or they might not show up at all. They might take it out of the next version, but still these are something to look forward to in the future. Some of these I would consider significant updates. Some of them are pretty minor, but still all worth mentioning, I think. So let's get started. First of all, we're apparently gonna be getting a light theme for Windows Shell, and the Windows Shell is literally just the user interface, like the file explorer, the start menu, that sort of thing. It's like the skin of Windows, and apparently they're gonna be introducing more of a light skin. So if you like dark mode, this is basically the opposite of that. The start menu might look a little bit brighter, along with the file explorer, and that sort of thing. So you might like that. Next, apparently Windows is going to soon be separating the search bar from Cortana. So you might know when you type in something into the search bar. You might be looking for a file, but it might also just ask Cortana to see if it has an answer for something you're not even asking. You know how it is, it's nonsense. So apparently it's gonna be separated out, which should make it a lot easier to actually find what you're looking for if you're not trying to talk to Cortana. Another nice thing is home users are soon going to be able to actually properly delay Windows updates. And I'm assuming this is just gonna be for feature updates. You might know that really up until now, only pro enterprise versions can delay feature updates, but home users were kind of forced to update whenever that update was rolled out but you'll now be able to pause updates for up to seven days at a time, I think, or like 35 days total. So you can keep extending the pause, which is really nice if you don't wanna install major updates right away, because we know that Windows has not had a great history of uh, killing bugs before they're released. So this is something I would probably actually recommend, at least for the feature updates, but not delaying security updates, of course. Also related to updates, Windows 10 is apparently going to start reserving a few gigabytes of storage space on your hard drive for updates to download and install. And apparently this is gonna be up to like seven gigabytes, but it might be less. So I guess this is for people who might, I don't know, they have such low storage space that they can't even install updates, which is obviously not a good thing, especially for security updates. So this will ensure that every Windows computer will at least be able to install updates and keep up to date, no matter how much crap you put on the hard drive. Next, we have a couple small updates. One is that the settings menu is apparently now gonna be showing your Microsoft account info at the top. So it'll show you, I don't know if you have any credit in your Microsoft account that you can spend on things. It'll be able to take you to the settings for your account, whatever. So more access to that. Also, Windows is soon gonna allow you to uninstall more programs that are bundled with Windows. So if you don't need like the Mail app or something, I think that's one of them, then you can uninstall this whole new list of apps in addition to just the few that were before. Here's a really cool upcoming feature, which is the Windows Sandbox. So Sandbox is basically a type of software that allows you to run software kind of like in a virtualized environment, like a contained mini version of Windows. So if it's a virus or it's something that might affect the rest of the computer, it won't be able to escape that so-called Sandbox. And I guess the term Sandbox comes from the idea that you, like, you play in a sandbox and it's kind of temporary, that sort of thing. So this will be really cool. It'll be using Microsoft's hyper-virtualization technology or whatever. Up until now, you would have to install some third-party software like Sandboxy is one, but now it'll be built right into Windows. So if you download some sketchy software, and you don't want it to affect the rest of the computer if you're not sure if it's safe, you'll be able to do that. Though apparently that will only be available in Windows 10 Pro and above versions, so I don't think it's gonna be available in home. Here's a few more cool little features. One of them is that the settings menu is now going to allow you to configure like network options. So before, if you wanted to like set a static IP or the DNS, for a certain network adapter. You had to dig into the control panel. You couldn't do it from the new settings window, which I'm not really a fan of, but apparently now you'll be able to do that. We'll also be getting a option to change the cursor size of the Windows little cursor, so you can make it bigger or smaller. I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't had that before, but I think that's especially important, obviously, for high resolution monitors now, where it makes the cursor look really small. And next, in the File Explorer, there's gonna be a new option for user-friendly dates. 
So you know how if you have the date of the file that was created or modified, whatever, it'll show the date and time. It'll now give you the option to have it say like five hours ago instead of displaying the exact time. Probably not gonna use that, but a lot of users might prefer that way. Microsoft is also gonna be adding the option to use a security key to log in, which is a physical security key that you can plug into your computer, keep it with you, and it's like cryptographically uh, encoded so that literally no one, unless they have that specific key, will be able to log in, which is an alternative to maybe a pin or using Windows Hello for your face. So that's a nice option at least. Another cool little thing is that you'll now be able to manually sync the time of your computer with Microsoft servers right in the settings menu. So it's a lot easier than what you had to do before, which is dig way deep into the date and time settings and go to all these different options. And finally, you would have an option to click sync now, but now it's a lot easier if, I don't know, your computer seems to be off sync for some reason. Although I thought it does that automatically, but maybe if you wanna do it manually yourself, you can. Here's a nice one that I didn't really think I needed, but I'm gonna appreciate it. And that is that the task manager will now allow you to set a default tab. So you know how when you press control shift tab, you might wanna have it open always to the list of processes. So because you know that if you're opening the task manager, it's probably to end a process. And that way it'll save you like, I don't know, one click or one second every time you do it, but it's still nice. Here's another kind of funny one, and that is that if you're installing Windows, at least for versions that are pro, enterprise, and student, you're no longer gonna have to listen to Cortana talk to you while you're installing it, which I don't think was disableable until at least a little bit into the installation, so that's nice. And finally, interestingly, Windows is gonna be introducing a feature that will automatically roll back and undo an update if it detects that something went wrong with it which is kind of like, why do they need that feature? But I guess it's nice that they do have it. So you might notice it says, oh, we undid an update because something went wrong or whatever, that's why. So those are just some features that for the most part, we probably will see soon. Maybe not all of them, but at least some of these do look pretty cool and are worth looking forward to. Let me know in the comments which you think are coolest or you don't want, I don't know. We can talk about that down there. If you want to subscribe, I make a couple new videos a week. And if you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos on here you can just click on. So thanks again for watching, guys. Until next time, be seeing you.